All right, um, Jonathan Bidlack is an economist. He comes on with us quite routinely, talking about a lot of government spending and things of that nature. Jonathan Bidlack, go to spendingtracker.org. I want to get to your article going after my guy, but that's okay. I don't have any problem of DeSantis. That was good. I, I, Jonathan's a friend of the show, so I, I did a little bit of... Like we're across at the kitchen table, Jonathan. We're cracking jokes, a little fun criticism, and I know. And by the way, and Roger will tell you, you don't take any of it personal. It's kind of like a shtick, but I got. I want to get to that in a second. Roger, think everything's personal, but it's I not. take it very personal. No, no. No, I'm joking. So, so anyway, so Jonathan, inflation moderated seven point seven percent. Do you attribute this because you're an economist? You know, I'm, I follow this. You know, as a former economics reporter, supply chain on a scale of one to ten, ten being the worst. It's probably, some would say, business groups out there, maybe at a six or seven. It's gotten a little bit better. Cost of goods have gone up. People aren't buying as many. So if you don't have more, if the, if the demand and supply and cost of goods may come down, they got to get things off the shelf. Is the 7.7 we saw right now, is this a blip and or is it, as the president would say, because of his Inflation Reduction Act already taken hold? <laughs> well, first, thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, look, it's, it, it's definitely not thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, right? Which which literally spends more in the short term uh, than it than it saves. So let's let's just set that aside right now. Um, I think, look, I mean, the Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates incredibly rapidly, and so I think that what you're seeing are sort of maybe the first the first sort of blip as a result of of that. But you know, I think I think that uh, let's not get get carried away by you know one one month's worth of data. I mean, we need to see a prolonged trend before you can really make any sort of conclusions about that. And I think that's the perspective that, that the Federal Reserve is, is making. And, you know, of course, they played a big role in sort of, uh, you know, blowing up the inflation that we have currently as well as as well as the last two administrations. But, uh, you know, now we're sort of seeing interest rates rising as a result. And that, to me, more than anything else, is, is what's causing, uh, you know, what we're seeing. Now, Jonathan, everybody, you know, we had a recession. I guess if you're Biden, it was not a recession. But anyway, we had a recession. Now we're into a first, the third quarter, which is now a positive economic GDP. But yet, they're still talking about economists. Uh, you know, when I watch them on Fox Business, CNBC, ABC Business, they all still believe a recession or another one is right around the corner. What are they attributing that to? Well, I mean, first of all, you should look at some of the, you know, obviously we've seen the, the jobs numbers coming out of a number of uh, uh, tech firms, right, and now flowing into some of the financial Great firms. Point. And you yep. tend to see you, t- you tend to see movement in those places first, right, before you do in the wider economy. So I wouldn't get too carried away on that, right? Um, I mean, look, I mean, I think that the, the, the attitude has been for a long time, and it's not necessarily unfounded that the fundamentals of the economy were strong coming out of the, the, the you know, the, the COVID recession, if you will. And so uh, I think that that's kind of been the mindset for, for a while. But, you know, whether or not that will remain true as the Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates quite aggressively, uh, that's anyone's guess. And, you know, you know, of course, everyone always says that past performance doesn't necessarily, uh, uh, you know, predict future gains. And I think that the, the attitude so far has been to really rely on this recent performance. But the fundamentals of the economy change when the Federal Reserve raises interest rates. Yeah. So Jonathan had an article out. Uh, I mean, you had several political and others carried your uh, your article where it said roger you like this one trump is a problem for republicans but he says desantis may not be the solution you talked about the gop being a danger of one call the personality for another explain to me and this is fine you can attack my guy because he uh, you'd like me i mean i i don't uh, i let people kind of defend their own here what is the call to personality for the very successful Governor Ron DeSantis? I mean, I know a lot of guys that love Ron, but not really big fans of Trump out there. What do you explain this call to personality? Sure. So, first of all, of course, it's not it's not an attack on, know, on Governor DeSantis it's at all. At all. Um, m- m- I make a couple of points. And one is that I think that there are a lot of Republicans who are looking to quote move on from Donald Trump, uh, and and the results on election day basically gave them a reason to say, oh look, let's look at this alternative. Ron DeSantis is the perfect alternative. But you know, as I point out, there are actually a lot of strong Republican governors across the country. First True. of all, that I think should be considered in this conversation. I mean, if you just do a quick comparison, you know, Governor. DeSantis won in Florida by 19 points, um, but Marco Rubio won by 17. So is Marco Rubio also, a, you know, a, a great candidate again this time around? Um, you compare that to other places. I mean, if you look at Mike DeWine in Ohio compared to J.D. Vance, DeWine won by something like 25 points. Right. J.D. Vance only won by six. 
Same thing in New Hampshire with Chris Sununu and, and, and Bulldog losing to Maggie Hassan. So, so first point is I think there are a lot of other people who should be on the table. We shouldn't just be quick to jump to the next flash in the pan. I think that Republicans have had a history of doing this in the past, right, just cycling through through the, the flavor of the moment. Um, the other point to make, I think, is that, you know, I think that Republicans uh, like to pretend that Florida is still a swing state. And the reality is Florida's not a swing state anymore. Florida's pretty pretty red. And, and we can debate whether or not, you know, that's because of Governor DeSantis or because of sort of wider trends that are happening. But the broader point is that Florida is not representative, in my opinion, of the swing states that a Republican nominee will ultimately have to win. And we just saw, you know, many of the candidates that not only Donald Trump endorsed, but also Governor DeSantis endorsed, go down in a lot of these swing states, Pennsylvania, Nevada, Arizona, and so on. And so I would argue that to some degree, right, the, the lesson that we should be taking away from that is that Trumpism was rejected by these voters because Trump himself wasn't on the ballot. And a candidate who doesn't have that kind of baggage would probably be more right. successful in those swing states. So let me play this game with you. Roger, you jump in where I'm right or wrong. Okay. When did Trump endorse the candidates? Primary. When did DeSantis do it? Oh, he did it after the primary. Yep. Big difference. Okay, number two. And I'm not disagreeing with you. I mean, I mean, I think mm-hmm. some, a lot of Trumps out there should have done much better. Um, when you look at the area of governors, may I also point out that, that for example, would you contend that Georgia is a swing state? I would. But yet, Brian Kemp did amazing, even with all yep. the registered votes on the left, because and we, we played the clips, a lot of people are like, I don't like Trump, but I like Kemp. And the main reason they said, and I think a lot of people said this about DeSantis, Roger, is because of their handling of COVID. Right. So, and I wonder the, whether or not the you know the, the color of the state, blue, purple, or red, would continue if COVID, once COVID hopefully goes away forever. Yeah. If it does. Go ahead, Jonathan. Well, I mean, I mean, look, I mean, I, I think Governor Kemp should be considered a, a candidate for for twenty twenty four as well, right? Um, I mean, look, I think if you look at Kevin Stitt, right, the the rock solid conservative in in Oklahoma right. who wasn't expected to win and had tens of millions of dollars spent against him, I mean, he's quite tested too. So you have a lot of these people, I think, who from a you know, if I if I put my my you know political advisor cap on, who actually should be very competitive and should at least be in the mix. But I think that Republicans have been, or some Republicans anyway way have been so caught up in in well let's move on let's go to governor DeSantis because he gets the base fired up but the problem is that the getting the base fired up isn't necessarily good enough in a general election and some of these other candidates might actually be very well more i'm not going to disagree if, if DeSantis, i like christine known from south dakota i like chris and nunu from new hampshire i like kemp i like uh, uh what is it uh, abbott i mean i'm with you you know what's interesting when you look at a lot of this i think the reason why by the way jonathan bidlack uh economist here on our newsmaker line they, his uh his website SpendingTracker.org. One of the things I think is the success about DeWine in Ohio and Sununu, where Democrats still won. You look at Kemp in Georgia, DeSantis, they were able to win independents, which make and break elections. And I think that is what the success is what they're looking at with DeSantis when yeah. he won. Uh, dude, you don't win. Republicans do not win Miami Dade. Republicans do not win Palm Beach counties. And DeSantis didn't even moderate his positions. And so something you got to sit back and go what did they do better this time around Sure, but but you also have to consider that. Well, first of all, a couple a couple of points there. I mean, one, you know, Governor Bush back in the day, right, didn't do too terrible in a number of these groups either. That's so true. It's not like this is the first time this has ever happened. But not in those the two counties that didn't. But go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, the, 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 the second point is that, you know, with respect to the Hispanic vote, I mean, I think that there's been a lot written about, you know, the, the trend of Hispanics, particularly male Hispanics in the last few elections, trending toward toward Republicans. And that didn't start with Governor DeSantis. If anything, that's something that, that Donald Trump deserves credit for. Um, the real question, I think, in terms of 2024 is, Who's going to be able to win those those suburban, you know, the proverbial soccer point. moms yep. who are who are trending to Republicans? And I don't think it's obvious that Rob De- Ron DeSantis's you know brand of conservatism is going to be more successful with that uh, cohort of voters. Well, it was certainly successful in Florida. So I mean, but hey, that's okay. It was, but by the way, I, I wouldn't give Trump. Actually, the, the the Hispanics were already swinging around a little bit. Yeah. But but I'm just telling you, there was just there was. Some, I think COVID defined DeSantis. Now I'm not saying this is going to happen two years later with another candidate. But anyway, so I mean, it's not like me and Roger on the ballot. But hey, all right. So anyway, listen, <laughs> Jonathan Bidlack, happy Thanksgiving, brother, and uh, I'm glad you came on, man. You bet. Always appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man. Always always enjoy having him come on.